Thank you very much. Impact. Let's pray. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for your power to lift us up, take us from where we are to where we ought to be. I pray, Lord, you take hold of every life. Move us on. Move us up. Move us forward. Confirm each in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Our theme is from grace to glory. There are those little words there you might miss out. From to. From to. If you're going to move from one place to the other, you need a from and you need a to. You're coming from somewhere. You're going to another place. It takes motion. And so if you're going to go from grace to glory, that takes motion. If you sit, you're not going from to. If you are stagnant, you are not going from one place to the other. If you are satisfied and you sit or you stand or you stay or you are stagnant, there is no motion. There is no desire. There is no determination. There is no destination. You are not from to. But when you want a change, you get up, you take steps, you move on, then you are going from grace to glory. The people God has given grace. Look at Adam. Adam in the first chapter of the Bible. By grace he was created. By grace the whole world was before him. By grace he possessed all things. But many people think that level is final. If I am just like Adam, and I have the grace, I have the provision, what else do I need? God wanted Adam to move from grace to glory. Where he was was just the beginning point. And he was still to subdue. He was to have dominion. And it is as he went on and subdued and had dominion, he'll be moving from grace to glory. Adam allowed an apple, fruit of that tree, one apple to stand between him and grace glory Adam a laissé une pomme un simple fruit créer un blocage entre lui et le passage à la gloire There are many people in life they allow one apple Il y a des gens dans la vie ils laissent une pomme one bite one little thing to stand between them and glory. What was Adam to do? See. All the provision of the Lord. See. Number two. Seize. 
that he is all the opportunities around him since that go up move on he was to study he wasn't there when the whole world was created the sea the land the fish the bird to conquer he must study all the gold in the earth all the minerals in the earth all the substance in the earth everything provided for him he was to search you see as you come to this life and you have a lot of provision around you and you want to move from grace to glory you see there are people that see they don't observe the people that observe they don't perceive they have sight they don't have insight you must see look at yourself now in college at the university what do you see what do you see in those books what do you see of the opportunities around you what do you see of the employment opportunities what do you see of this new technology see seize you seize the opportunity you come out of the crowd you come out of the crowd the people that have sight they don't have insight anywhere you are there are those opportunities there you see you seize and now you begin to study Adam did not do any of that he allowed an apple to hinder him from moving forward going on and possessing that glory you see you seize you study you search search you know all of us should be research fellows I'm searching how to improve what I do I'm searching how to be a better person I'm searching how to contribute in my community I'm searching how to I'm searching how to touch other lives lift them up I see I see I study I search I subdue I subdue I subdue we have to subdue all these mountains to create a road through the mountain we have to subdue this mountain that we don't allow the mountain here to stop our journey from grace to glory that takes effort we cannot be sleeping all night sleeping all day and subdue anything there comes a day in my life when i have to wake up look at how many years you have spent on earth maybe you are 17 years of age if you spend the next 17 years like you spend the last 17 years where will you be at 34 35 maybe you spent 35 years already in life if you spend the next 35 years like you spent the last 
35 years eating the apple, eating the apple, allowing the half apple to hinder you from going to glory. Where will you be at 70? You wake up and you say, I will subdue every mountain before you, every challenge before you. I will subdue. You see, you seize, you study, you search, you subdue, you spread. Adam was to spread whatever he got to the descendants. What did Adam spread? The story of eating an apple. Of one little piece of fruit hindering him from growing to glory. That's all he spread. When Adam was created, there was no music, but the instruments of music were there. He was to search and study and subdue and produce and spread. There was no bicycle, there was no car, there was no motorcycle, there was no aeroplane. He was to study and search, subdue and spread that knowledge so that we can move on to glory. He allowed one apple to stop his creative mind from producing. He was to spread the good thing. And then he was to soar and succeed. Brothers and sisters, uh, children, boys and girls, sons and daughters, that's why we're here today. I'm not here to entertain you. I'm here to wake you up. I'm not here to, you know, just uh, excite your feelings. Everyone here, everyone listening, that you will understand that apple, I will disown it. That's it that will hinder you from going from grace to glory. You have to reject that thing. From today, I want to begin to see. From today, I want to begin to seize the opportunities that I have. From today, I want to study. I want to study myself. What hinders me? What stops me? What discourages me? What makes me to easily give up? What makes me to give in? I want to study myself. I want to study my environment. What can I do at my age to go from grace to glory? I want to study my companions. Adam did not study Eve. And he, did, he didn't search what could come from Eve that will hinder him from going from grace to glory. I want to see and to seize and to study and to search. What instruments do I need? What tools do I need? So that as I study and search, I'll be able to subdue my world. 
Having subdued my world, how do I spread the knowledge of God so that as I succeed, I make thousands and millions of people to also succeed? I don't really want to succeed, I want to soar. I want to move on. I want to move on. The few minutes we have before us. I'm going to pray that God will wake you up. You must not remain at this level. If, even if you've got all the provision, all the provi all the opportunities of Adam, you still must leave that level. You must get your glory. That's why I come to touch to you today. And I want to stir you up. I want to disturb you. That you'll be dissatisfied with where you are. I'm not going to read too many scriptures. Many of the scriptures I want to read, you know them. I want to take what's in that scripture and inject it into you. You cannot sit down anymore. You will rise up. The message is rising by grace to reign in, in glory. Rising by grace to reign in, in glory. In Romans chapter 5 verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace we have entry we have access by faith into this into this grace by what do i get into grace by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. In English, F A I T H. In English, F A I T H. Forsaking all, I trust Him. Forsaking all my weakness, I trust Him. Forsaking all my setbacks, I trust him. Forsaking my past failure, I trust him. Forsaking my deficiencies, I trust him. Forget the past. Forsake the past. Forsake all those things that make you trip. What made you fall? Forsaking all, I trust him. And then we can enter into this grace. Wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Do you see those two words there? Grace, glory. Grace, glory. And between that grace and glory, I have faith. The faith that this is where God is taking you to. He's taking you to glory. Me. Where are you? I say, where are you? Taking you to where? And you must have faith. All the things you are thinking about, I cannot. 
I am weak. Je suis faible. I'm a failure. Je joue toujours. I cannot succeed. Faith will make you to forsake all and to trust him. La foi va te pousser à tout abandonner et à mettre ta confiance en lui. And today you will rise up by the grace of God. You must rise up by the grace of God. Go to the Mondays. Amen. You rise by grace. And then you are moving on. Nothing will stop you. Nothing will stop me. Hey, there are many good things I wanted to do in the past. And then I allowed an apple to stop me. I allowed a little thing to stop me. But now you are unstoppable. My boy, my daughter there, from now you are unstoppable. You will reign in glory. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, for if by one man's offense the man who allowed one apple to stop, to stand between grace and glory, if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the righteousness shall reign by one Jesus Christ. Your time has come. My time has come. We're looking at three things. Number one. Number one, the good path from grace to glory. If you're going to move from destination A to destination Z, there is a path. And you need to understand the milestones in that path. So that you can take the good path and move on from grace to glory. Number two, the glowing pursuit for of growth in goodness. You're always pursuing. Every day you're always pursuing. Every week, every month, you're always pursuing. Today I must be better than I was yesterday. This week, I must be higher than I was last week. This year, I must shine brighter than I did last year. The glowing pursuit of growth in goodness. Number three, the glorious paradise for the godly in glory. Somebody who is always going up, up, up. Will get higher, higher, higher. And eventually will get to the highest. I'm looking at somebody there. From grace to glory. From this place, you'll get to paradise. Look at number one. Number one is the good path from grace to glory. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 6, reading from verse 16. 
Thus says the Lord. Stand ye in the ways and see. You must stand. You must wait. You must think. Why do I just keep running and running and I don't stop to think about the path I'm taking? Why don't you stand? Why don't you wait and say, where am I going? This path I take, where will it lead me? That's what I did. Spiritually, I had to stop and say, this religion that I follow, when I've been born again, where will it take me? educationally I had the brain but I was too playful no goal no timetable no dedication to study following after friends and we were all like the same and I got D E F D E F in many subjects I was becoming a well-known mediocre. But I waited. I saw. I looked around. And I said, no, this will not continue. God says, stand in the ways and see. And ask for the old paths. The old paths. Not the old paths of Adam. Not the old paths of Achan. Not the old paths of Saul. The old paths of Abraham. The old paths of Moses. The old parts of the people that live before you that had that same profession before you and they succeeded. Ask for the old parts. All these our teachers and leaders and counselors and pastors and professors who are teaching us already they are succeeding. Go to them. Ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? Where is the good way? I want to be saved. Where is the good way? I want to be successful. Where is the good way? I want to move up. Where is a good way? And then it says, And uh, walk therein, and you shall find rest for your souls. That is a path that leads from grace to glory. That's a path that leads from failure to success. There's a path that leads from sadness to joy. Where is the good way? Number one, repentance. Repentance. Repentance, there is a spiritual repentance. There is an educational repentance. Spiritually. I look at my past life. I say God doesn't want that. That will ruin me. That will wreck me. That will destroy me. I turn and I face the Savior. I change my mind. I turn around. Educationally. I look at what I have been. 
I don't like books. I like play more. I don't like teachers. I like the football more. I don't like study. I like sleep more. I have to repent. I have to return. I have to say no to all those things that will stop my getting to glory. I need to look at my friends. Are my friends, all of them, below the pass mark? Are they the people that, you know, talk a lot and sleep a lot and roam about a lot and play a lot? I need to repent. Because now I stand. I look around. I see. I seize my opportunity. And I turn away from the people that will keep me down. Number one, repentance. Number two, redemption. And it's only God that can do that through Christ. And I go to God. And I say, Lord, life has been wasted. My brain is becoming dormant. My life is like so-so. It doesn't amount to much. Lord, redeem my soul. And then the Lord forgives me. He changes my life. He gives me a new direction to follow. Educationally. That's what we call remedial teaching or learning. The thing, the thing I should have learned in year one. I was busy roaming about. Now I come to year three. And the lecturer or the teacher, they are all referring to that scene I should have mastered in year one. And when they mention that, I say, okay, that was the time I didn't learn anything, didn't study anything. Now it's coming up again and again. So, redemption, redemption educationally, there is a kind of remedial learning. Number three is restoration. Restoration. Where you should have been. Up there. You come to the Lord. Now, when God created Adam, he made him Lord and Master over creation. But did Adam subdue anything? No. Did he create music? No. Did he dig up the earth to get the gold and the minerals? No. Did he examine the life of the bird, the fish, the animals, and then give us a dictionary? Maybe he will say a dictionary of all those creations of God. No. no. He was more interested in the apple than in subduing the land. And when, when God said, Adam, where are you? Instead of asking in prayer to be restored to the position he was at that time, only excuse, excuse, excuse. For us to be restored to where we ought to be. No more excuses. 
will say, Lord, this is what I have done. Now, this is what the person you put with me has done. This is what the government has done. They didn't give me scholarship. This is what my parents have done. They said they didn't have money for higher education. Take responsibility. Take hold of your life. Link up with your creator. And say, I failed, but I know you can restore me back to where I ought to be. Today is the day of your restoration. Number four is righteousness. Righteousness. What's righteousness? Doing right. Instead of doing wrong, doing right. Instead of doing wrong, reject the apple of the devil. That's doing right. Receive the instruction of the Lord. That's doing right. Remember the word of the Lord unto you. My friend, all these years we've been going to a Bible believing church. We've heard a lot of sermons, a lot of messages, a lot of Sunday scripture, a lot of Sunday school. Now receive that. Be not only equally yoked together with some believers. Receive that. Come out from among them and be separate. Receive that righteousness. Our resilience. Resilience. You know what resilience is? Being able to bounce back. Look at that football. Throw it against the wall. And the ball will bounce back. Why? There is air inside that rubber. If you deflate that rubber, no air inside that round rubber anymore. Throw it against the wall. It will just fall to the ground flat. But when you put air in that ball, when there is something inside you, better still when there is somebody inside you, the encourager, his name is Emmanuel, the uplifter, his name is Emmanuel, your creator and you have him on the inside anytime you are suppose you, somebody kicks you here and you lie down there the air inside the power inside the voice inside the driver inside will make you to bounce back your life will not be empty there will be something in you that when the circumstances of life when they push you here you bounce back you have resilience our responsibility when you say, I am a responsible man. Nobody has to remind me I do my duty. Nobody has to push me. I push myself. Nobody has to pull me. I pull myself. You are a responsible man, a responsible woman. 
You don't need the insult of somebody that will say, here you are. You're going from grace to glory. Well, look at what you're... You don't need all that. You wake up in the morning and you say, today I'll be an achiever. I'm talking to somebody. Somebody. Where is he? Where is she? You wake up in the morning, brush your face, clean up very well, dress up like somebody who is responsible, and let responsibility show in the way you walk. It is, it's not mama driving you to school. It's not your wife driving you to your place of work. There's the driver on the inside that says, I am an achiever. And where I am going today will add something good to my life. I am responsible. Je suis you take a taxi. Tu un taxi. The taxi breaks down. Le taxi a une... That doesn't stop you on what journey. Cela ne pas Another taxi is waiting for you. Un autre taxi you link up with somebody. Tu es avec and you are disappointed. Et tu es déçu. There's a better person waiting for you. The point is, don't blame the taxi or the taxi driver. They stopped me. If you were unstoppable, he couldn't have stopped you. They hindered me. If you were unhinderable, nobody could have hindered you. From today, you will take that destiny in your hand. You will go up. I will go up. I must go up. And all the things that used to hinder me, that used to stop me, they will not stop me anymore. Amen. Amen. You must take action. You must be responsible. And it is not a career somebody else imposes on you. Stand. Why do I want to be a doctor? Because I choose to. Because I declare it. I am responsible. Some of my lecturers are hard and tough. The face of any lecturer will not stop me. Some of the teachers, they don't teach for me to understand. I will understand. Say that now. You will understand. Then raining. Raining. You don't stop until you rain. I remember many, many years ago. They gave us the uh, multiplication table. Seven times seven. Seven times eight. Seven times nine. And some of them I just forgot. And the teacher will shout. The shouting didn't help me. That didn't make me to remember seven times nine. But eventually, I said this thing is very important. Seven times one, seven times two, seven times three. By myself, I took responsibility. 
Now, if you ask me, seven times nine, I've mastered that thing. Now, I reign over that multiplication table. That's how you reign. Everything in life that appears to confront you. And you say, this is tall. This is hard. How does this teacher want me to remember all these uh, tables? Be resilient and take responsibility. You are in. I'm talking to somebody I want his answer. You will reign in Jesus' name. Yeah. You follow the path in every area of your life. The next time I see you, I see the smile of a conqueror on your face. Internally, you reign. Educationally, you reign. Morally, you reign. The Lord will help you. Look at number two here. Number two is the glowing pursuit of growth in goodness. Pursuit. Pursuit. You become an athlete. You run on the field. On the field of life. You're not at the stadium as a spectator. You're not in life as a spectator. You're not in the clapping corner. You are on the path of duty. And the spectators, they'll have somebody to watch. Who are they going to observe? I said, who are they going to observe? And the people at the clapping side, they'll have somebody to clap for. Who are they going to clap for? You are the man. You are the woman. You are the boy. And you are the girl. When we talk of clapping, there are many forms of clapping. Clapping may come by giving you an award. That award is clapping. Clapping may come as a result of a good certificate. That's a form of clapping. Clapping may come as an offer of a good job that they deny other people and they give that job to you. Clapping may come as having a good car to ride. A good building to live in. Clapping may come by other people as you are coming. They said, we cannot be like him. We cannot be like her. And they patch to make you go ahead. The world will clap for you. The pursuit we ought to have. We're looking at uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11. It says here, it says, Wherefore also we plead with you, we pray always for you. That our God will count you worthy of this calling 
de la vocation. That's why you are here. C'est pourquoi vous êtes ici. It's the Lord that brought you here. C'est Dieu qui vous a amené ici. He said, I've been wanting to talk to you. Il dit, je veux te parler. To pull you up. Pour que tu te lèves. I've been wanting to talk to you. Je veux te parler. To make you pursue the goal of life. I've been wanting to talk to you that you will glow in life. That's why you came. And before you go, the Lord will give you that thing inside you that makes you to glow in pursuit. And it says that God will make you worthy. Worthy of being a child of God. Worthy of being a successful man, woman in this life. Worthy of progress. Worthy of the fellowship of good people. Worthy of every good thing in life. Worthy of this calling. And fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness. What is it God will look at your life and smile? And the angels will say the Father God in heaven is smiling. Many things in life make him, make him sad. But when he turns your direction, he smiles. Says, that's a creature of my hand. That is a beloved child in my kingdom. That is a progressive person in the world. Heaven will smile at you. The glory of God will be radiant in your life. My brother, my sister, how does that happen? Number one, a good washing. You go to the Lord and say, Lord, I've mixed too much with dirty people, dirty language in the world. I need a wash. The Lord will wash you clean. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Number two, good works. Good works. After you are washed, uh, look at it normally, naturally. After we wash in the morning, then we can go to school to go and do some good study. After we wash in the morning, then we can go to the office and do some good, good work there. When the Lord washes you spiritually, He sends you forth into the world to be the specimen of a good worker. And God is so happy about you that you go into the world and the grace he has given you, the strength he has given you, you go to do good work. How do we glow in our pursuit? Number three, a good word. Everywhere we go, nobody will say he was put down because he had my word. Nobody will say he was tired and he was sad because he had a word from my mouth. I have good washing. 
I have good works. I have good words to tell everybody. If I don't have a word that will encourage him, I'll keep quiet. If I open my mouth at all, I bring out a good word that will encourage him. Number four is a good will. And you must have that will every time you wake up in the morning. I will. I will do. I will. I will go. I will. I will rise. I will. I will study. I will. I will shine. Every time you wake up in the morning, you must have a good will. Number five there, a good way. There are many ways in life. And there's a way that seems right unto people. But that the ways of death and hell but you see you, you follow the good way. You think before you speak. You look before you jump. And before you follow any way, you say, those who have followed this way, where have they ended in life? A good watchfulness. There is a devil in the world. He doesn't like the people who are on the good way. He wants to make them trip. He wants to put a stumbling block in their way. He wants to destroy them. The, the devil will not destroy you. The Lord will be by your side every time. You will be watchful. Watch and pray that you fall not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There is a force of gravity that is always drawing down the people that want to go forward. And so you watch and pray. There are some people, they only pray, they don't walk. There is no balance in their lives. Pray, pray, pray. And they pray and pray and pray. They pray and fast. They fast and pray. But they don't balance it up. Watch and pray. When you pray, you're closing your eyes. After the prayer, you don't keep your eyes closed. And go through life keeping your eyes closed. You open your eyes so you can watch. Look at that vehicle coming from that way. If you close your eyes and you're praying, 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 that vehicle can cross you. Pray. But open your eyes. There's a vehicle coming that way. Pray. Open your eyes. Another vehicle is coming from that way. It is that balance in life. Praying and watching. Watching and praying. That there will be no accident in your life. What is the person I'm praying for there? There will be no accident in your life. Accident will not break your bone. Will not break your heart. Will not break your destiny. And then there is good wisdom. 
good wisdom. Is there bad wisdom? Is there bad wisdom? Any kind of wisdom that makes you to forsake your own destiny. And then you're looking at the destiny of other people. That's bad wisdom. But the wisdom that makes you glow. The wisdom that makes you pursue. And you know and you say, I am getting there. You will get there. You will get there. You, nobody will turn your back. When you have all this glowing pursuit. And it's a pursuit that makes you glow on the inside. The fire of revival, renewal is always burning in your heart. And you will succeed. What are you? I said you will succeed. Look at number three here now. Number three, we're looking at glorious paradise for the for the godly in glory. Here in the world, you wear a crown. Here in the world, the Lord will elevate you. Here in the world, the Lord will make you soar in success. And you will carry that goal, glory into heaven. Are you going to heaven? I said, are you going to heaven? Will you get there? By the grace of God. You will get there. How do we know we're going to get there? Number one, there's a glorious place. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Every time you pray, every time you sing, Every time you leave, you know, Christ has gone to prepare a place for me. And he's preparing me for that place. Number two, there's a glorious partnership. He says, I will help you. And then you will go in the direction you ought to go in life. This is a glorious privilege that we are called the sons and the daughters of God. This privilege will not allow anything in life to take it away from your hand. I am a child of God. Say that I am a child of God. Say that I am a child of God. You'll not allow a so called friend, it's an enemy, posing to be a friend, to take that privilege away from you. And then you're going to have a glorious promotion. Eventually, we're going to get there. To the place where Satan cannot get to. To the place where demons cannot get to. To the place where we ever rejoice before the Lord. You're going to have a glorious promotion. Number five, you'll have a glorious perfection. When you get to heaven, 
Everything about you will be perfect. Your body will be perfect. Your heart perfect. Your environment perfect. And all the angels around you perfect. Nothing will stop you from getting to that place. Number six is a glorious possession. You will possess your own mansion in heaven. And then a glorious perpetuity. Always, always, always there. After this, the GCK of Cameroon, I will go to my next place of, of appointment. And you will go to your next place of achievement. We're together in heart, but we'll not see each other physically. But when you and I get over there, I will see you, I will see you, I will see you. For all eternity, a glorious perpetuity. I'm so happy today that the Lord is moving you from where you are. From grace to glory. And while you are going, number one, you go. You go. Because you know, if we're going to get to that place, we have to go. Number two, you grow. You grow. You have been growing before today. From today, you will grow taller. You will grow higher. You will grow further. You will grow spiritually. You will grow educationally. You will grow emotionally. You will grow mentally. You will grow joyfully and cheerfully. You go. You grow. You glow. You will glow. Your light will shine everywhere you go. And people will see the goodness of God in your life. Your name will be sweet in their mouth. When they are looking for an example of success, they will mention your name. When, when they are looking for an example of significance, your name will come up in their mouth. When they're looking for those who run and walk and jump and soar and never get tired, your name will be in their mouth. Where are you? I say, where are you? You stand up like a person that knows I go, I grow, I glow. The love of God is over you. The goodness of God is upon you. And the grace of God will envelop you. Every tiredness the Lord will take away. Problems that hinder the Lord will take away. A new day has come for you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Lord, I'm moving on from grace unto glory. Tell him, tell him. He loves you. If there's anything that gives you guilt or condemnation, it's by your side. At the moment you confess and forsake, 
He forgives you. Grace in your life. Tell the Lord, by grace, he forgives. By grace, he saves. By grace, he makes your life better. Every disappointment of the past, he will cancel. By grace. By grace. By grace. That grace is given to you now. Accept. Receive. No more condemnation. He's lifting you up. And now he's going to make you to walk in the path that leads from grace to glory. No disgrace in your life. No setback in your life. No failure in your life. You are moving on to glory. And at the end of life, a glorious paradise, a glorious perfection, a glorious perpetuity. Praise him and thank him because he has answered your prayer. He has answered my prayer. He has answered my prayer. Without anything pulling me back. I will arise. I will go up. I will grow. My life will glow. In Jesus name we pray. If the Lord has answered your prayer, can you raise up your hand? Up. Up. You will not come down. Forward. Forward. You will not go back. Stronger. Stronger. You will not be weak. Life, good life, eternal life, abundant life is before you. Nothing will turn your back. Poverty will not turn your back. It will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Persecution will not turn your back. You will be stronger than your persecutor. As Israel was stronger than Egypt, you'll be stronger than every force that tries to turn your back. Everyone is smiling upon your life. Keep up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your sons and daughters. Thank you for the men and women. Thank you for fathers and mothers. Thank you for leaders and pastors. Lord, I pray the glory of heaven will come upon every life in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive and forget the past. A new life. A new heart. A new pursuit. A new possession. A new power. Upon all your people in Jesus' name. The grace to go. The power to grow. 
and the sunshine to glow. Bring upon every life in Jesus' name. From this moment, from this day, you will go up, you will not fall down. You will grow up, you will not diminish. You will glow and your life will not be dark or deep. Now the Lord is with you. Go in the strength of the Lord. See. Seize. Study. Search. Subdue. Spread the good knowledge of the Lord. And soar to success and significance. Lord, confirm it in every life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.